Proverbs 15.11 KJV Hell and destruction are before the Lord. How much more than the hearts of the children of men? In the King James Version it reads, Hell and destruction. Meanwhile, in the New Versions it reads, Sheol and Abaddon. What on earth is Sheol and Abaddon? I know what hell is. It's the place with the fire and torment. And destruction is the opposite of construction. How can something that an English-speaking two-year-old can figure out be more difficult than archaic Hebrew words that nobody uses? Even the people who use these versions. You'd be surprised how many people doubt the existence of hell because of changes like these. Isaiah 7 verse 14, KJV, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. In the King James Version it reads, A virgin shall conceive. Meanwhile, the new versions read, A young woman shall conceive. A virgin conceiving is a miraculous event, but a young woman being pregnant is just natural. A young woman shall bear a son could be talking about any woman, which trivializes the birth of Jesus Christ. On an alternative note, the NKJV says the virgin rather than just a virgin. Turning Mary into some perpetual eternal virgin goddess, just referred to as the Virgin, sounds pretty Catholic to me. Isaiah 14 verse 12, KJV How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? In the King James Version, it reads, O Lucifer. Meanwhile, in the New Versions, it reads, Day Star, or Morning Star. Remember how in the very same chapter, he says, I will be like the Most High? Well, guess he might have a shot at that with these new versions. Remember Revelation 22 verse 16 and 2 Peter 1 verse 19. How these are all titles of Jesus Christ. Only verse with Lucifer, and yet every word matters. Maybe for reasons just like this. Isaiah 53 verse 10. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him, he hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. In the King James Version it reads, An offering for sin. Meanwhile, in the New Versions it reads, Offering for guilt. You should feel guilt for sin, and yet Christ made his soul an offering for sin so you wouldn't have to pay for it. Has the word sin become so archaic that one has to change the very word that Christ had to die for? I don't think so. Isaiah 66, verse 5, KJV, Hear the word of the Lord, ye that tremble at his word. Your brethren that hated you, that cast you out for my name's sake, said, Let the Lord be glorified, but he shall appear to your joy, and they shall be ashamed. 
In the King James Version, it reads, But he shall appear to your joy. Meanwhile, the new versions read, That we may see your joy. Here is distinctly found with the KJV that the Lord shall appear to the joy of those who have been persecuted for righteousness' sake. While the new versions get rid of this interpretation altogether. If you get rid of this verse, you get rid of another proof text within the Old Testament of the coming of the Lord. 1 John 2 verse 28 says, And now, little children, abide in him, that, when he shall appear, we may have confidence, and not be ashamed before him at his coming. Daniel 3.16 KJV Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. In the King James Version it reads, We are not careful to answer thee in this matter. Meanwhile, the new versions read, We have no need to answer you in this matter. We have no need to answer you. And then proceeds to answer him. If they were not careful to answer Nebuchadnezzar, that means they had no need to be cautious because the dilemma is so apparent that it went against God and his word that it didn't require complex thinking. Daniel 3 verse 25. KJV. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. In the King James Version, it reads, The Son of God. Meanwhile, the new versions read, A Son of the Gods, or the appearance of a God. This is the only reference to uppercase S, Son of God, throughout the whole Old Testament. If you do not have this reference, when the New Testament declares that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, there is no context and completely comes out of left field. The Babylonian calling the appearance of the fourth man the Son of God doesn't make this a pagan concept. And as stated before, this is the only reference. God can use lost people to declare revelations at times. As Caiaphas had even prophesied about the death of Jesus for Israel. Hosea 3 verse 1 KJV Then said the Lord unto me, Go yet, Love a woman beloved of her friend, yet an adulteress, according to the love of the Lord toward the children of Israel, who look to other gods and love flagons of wine. In the King James Version it reads, Flagons of wine. Meanwhile, the new versions read, Cakes of raisins, or raisin cakes, or sacred raisin cakes. Oh yes, I remember this commandment. Thou shalt not eat of the wicked raisin cakes. I guess this is what happens when a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. If you are a new version advocate, please tell me that the correct reading is actually not about drunkenness, but is actually about raisin cakes. I would love to see you scolding your grandmother the next time she invites you over for some baked goods. What a joke. Hosea 11 verse 12 KJV Ephraim compasseth me about with lies, and the house of Israel with deceit. But Judah yet ruleth with God, and is faithful with the saints. 
In the King James Version, it reads, But Judah yet ruleth with God. Meanwhile, the new versions read, And the people of Judah are still rebelling against me. Or, Judah is still unruly against God. There is no indication within the Masoretic text, all the Protestant Bibles of the 16th to 17th centuries, and any other version that came out before 1881 that Judah is to be unruly with God, and there are many new versions that are not so quick to make such a blunder as to say the exact opposite to the KJV. Hosea spends the whole chapter demonstrating how Ephraim has turned from God, and then turns and looks at Judah. Do you really think that Hosea would have spent 12 consecutive verses beating up on Ephraim just to say, eh, Judah's bad, without any context? Amos 3 verse 3. KJV, can two walk together except they be agreed? In the King James Version, it reads, except they be agreed. Meanwhile, the new versions read, unless they have made an appointment. Ever saw two people walk together without an appointment? You mean to tell me that you never ran into someone you know or knew and w wanted to catch up with them while they walked to their destination? Happens all the time. Actually, typically if you have made an appointment to meet somewhere, you might not actually walk together as someone typically shows up to the location first and probably sits down as they wait. There are so many scenarios where people are walking together that doesn't require an actual appointment. The new version rendering is just a big pile of malarkey. If you want to see more differences, subscribe to this channel or go to Gumroad and download list. Also on Gumroad is a KJV vs. New Tract along with other tracts and content you can download and print. All monetary contributions are appreciated. Thank you for watching this segment and hope this has been to your edification.